Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just another tinfoil hat. Welcome to my show. Now, before I get started on the actual episode here, I just wanted to say, first and foremost, um, a big thank you to my mom for taking over my channel for the past two episodes. Um, as she mentioned, this time of year is really busy for me as my, I guess you could say day job, um, is making costumes and running my own costume shop on Etsy. So yeah, like mid-September through October is just like a sea of costumes. Um, so that's been taking up a lot of my time lately, and I know that the schedule has kind of been slacking here on the channel. So yeah, just a huge thank you to my mom for taking over the channel. Um, you know, she was kind of nervous about it to make a couple of videos for me, even though it was her idea, which was a fantastic idea on her part. Um, but yeah, she was kind of nervous just, you know, putting yourself out there on YouTube, the internet. Um, so yeah, and kind of on that topic, I wanted to thank all of you guys for your extremely kind comments, you know, especially regarding my mom and all of your questions. You know, you were just all so very warm and welcoming her to taking over my channel. So I just wanted to thank you for that. Because as one comment mentioned, yeah, I have a great relationship with my mom. You know, she is not only, I mean, my mom, but also my biggest fan with all of my research and stuff like that. And, you know, has really been a huge figure in kind of helping me, you know, yeah, develop my brand when I was a kid, develop this interest. You know, whereas a lot of people, especially with this field, but honestly, I feel like with any passion or interest, um, even, you know, more kind of run of the mill ones, you know, a lot of the time, it seems like parents and parental figures, whether out of constructive criticism or concern, um, or, you know, not so great, kind of, um, uh, I guess you could say motivations, really try to dissuade um, that with their kids, you know, and my mom was not that way at all. She was like, okay, you're interested in this, then go ahead. And so, yeah, it was just, thank you so much for being so nice to her on my channel. And as she mentioned too, and I'll be teasing more about this in the future, I'm not going to release any big details except to say that I can update the word count. I am currently 105,000 words into a first draft on a book. Um, I think it'll be pretty unexpected. Nothing like what you guys have seen from me before. So yeah, hopefully I'll have more news about that as the process keeps going on. So also, I guess also before I have to um, get to the actual case here, I will say that my vacation was awesome. Um, and thank you all for the nice comments about that too. I had a great time and it was nice to kind of get away, even though it's the dead center of my busy season, it was nice to kind of have that break. Um, you know, I've Got a bunch of stuff done before I left, and now I'm back home and ready to get more stuff done. Um, so yeah, I had a fantastic vacation, and I did visit some really cool, purportedly haunted or weird locations. So I'm hoping to compile a few of those um, in forthcoming episodes. I hope that I'll be able to have, you know, the weekly schedule through October. We will see about that. Um, again, just because it's such a busy month for me, but I'm really hoping to, so fingers crossed. And yeah, I can't wait to tell you guys about some of the weird places that I got to see in my travels through north, like very far north Wisconsin and Minnesota. So that's all about that for now. Now we have to get to the fascinating and fantastic case of the Cataldo Catman. And yes, you heard me right. I said Catman. Now it seems only fair. I've had, we've talked about dog men on this channel, even a horse man. I guess you kind of even call the Mothman a bird man. So finally, we get to talk about a cat man. Incidentally, cats are my favorite animal. That's a little tidbit I don't think I've ever mentioned. So truthfully, this is a really quick case, um, but infinitely fascinating, which I first encountered in Clark and Coleman's wonderful book, Creatures of the Outer Edge. And for its lack of length, it makes up for in weirdness. So in November of 1968, Mr. and Mrs. Cataldo, yes, Cat Taldo, were sleeping in their Lorraine, Ohio home when they were awakened by a loud bump on the roof, followed by the sound of something moving near their bedroom window. Suddenly, from the window, a huge face appeared star staring down at the rudely awakened couple, with paws or hands perched on the windowsill. Now, Mr. Cataldo turned to search for his gun and jump up, but before you could say cat's pajamas, the creature was gone. Mr. Cataldo went to the window anyway to see where it ended up, he said that it ran around the east side of the house on two legs, weaving like an ape, crossed two streets, and then vanished into the woods. The Cataldos claimed that the creature was a light grayish-brown color, resembling a large lion of 600 pounds. Now a large bipedal lion, I guess. 
This strange visitor also left trace evidence in the form of two human-like palm prints. The prints were reversed and ran in a straight line. Now again, this is a very short case. You know, the couple is awakened in the middle of the night by a bump on the roof, there's movement outside their window, they see this bizarre lion-like, human-like thing staring down at them, and then as soon as they get up, it runs off into nearby woods. However, in this particularly just very short encounter, there are a lot of similarities to a bunch of other different types of encounters. Now, one of the first things that this really reminds me of um, is the many cases of bedroom invaders. Um, one of my personal favorites was the bizarre kind of sweater head intruder from John Keel's The Complete Guide to Mysterious Beings, in which a woman arrived home to her apartment and saw this strange, almost vampiric entity trying to crawl into her window. Um, yet again, you have the hands kind of perched on the windowsill and the upper body in the window itself. This also reminds me of another case I did recently, which was the terrifying tale of the Tallman bunk beds, in which the grandmother of the family was staying at the purportedly haunted house one night when she was sleeping on the couch and was awakened, and upon looking out the window saw two glowing eyes staring in at her. Um, so here, yet again, you have a couple who's sleeping and they're awakened by a strange noise. Looking at the window, they see this bizarre being staring down at them. Um, so yeah, you have countless cases of being kind of peering in the window, um, or even looking as though they're going to attempt to come in the window. And this just falls very neatly into that category. Now on the same tangent of the hands being perched in, on the windowsill, um, this brings up a really bizarre concept, which is the fact that the couple claimed that the hands were reversed, or the prints at least, were reversed. And to me, you know, this brings up all of the countless encounters where people say that they will see some sort of cryptid, whether it's Bigfoot or a dogman or even, you know, an anomalous black dog or black cat. And they say that something about it, aside from the fact that they're witnessing a bizarre cryptid, appears wrong, like the proportions are off. And in this case, especially the concept of reverse prints brings up a lot of folkloric examples of beings specifically with reversed feet, such as the Tata Duende of Belize, El Cipitillo of El Salvador, the Bhut of India, and the Shirel of Southeast Asia. Um, this concept of beings with reversed feet, um, or like even reversed hands, to me it kind of brings up this concept of almost a strange mirror image of our world. Now it's also interesting because in all these cases it's kind of folklorically held that the reason their feet are reversed is so that when they leave tracks you can't tell whether they're coming or going. Um, so again, you know, it just calls to mind the very trickster-like aspect of the paranormal. Also, kind of on a separate sort of tangent, it reminds me of the many accounts where people will be tracking big footprints or man-wolf prints and suddenly they just end. Um, so it kind of is almost a weird disclaimer, I guess you could say, that these beings don't make sense strictly physically. They need to be some sort of part physical being, you know, or kind of demi-physical being, I guess you could say. Something that is physical enough to leave evidence, however the evidence leads to pretty much nonsense. Now, like so many of these cases, this particular encounter, the details, if you just kind of remove the figure involved, you could place it in almost any category. Um, the detail of it weaving like an ape, of course, calls to mind many Bigfoot encounters. However, the fact that it was this feline-like creature, to me it almost reads kind of like a proto-man-wolf encounter. Um, if it seems like these things sort of travel in trends, um, this concept of the lion on two legs, it's almost like a felid instead of a canid, which there are other, you know, catman type encounters, which I'll definitely have to get into. Um, again, bringing up the Tallman bunk beds, the fact that they were awakened by a bump on the roof, you know, falls in line with hauntings or poltergeist phenomena, and then seeing this bizarre figure. And then weirdest of all, the fact that it just ran to the nearest, you know, patch of woods. I mean, not only is that in line with many cryptids such as Bigfoot or Manwolf, but tons of UFO occupant encounters have these supposedly technological entities trying to, you know, get out of sight immediately and running to the nearest patch of woods that they can find. Um, I just did an episode on the Godfrey Tinfoil Troop, which detailed these bizarre, you know, kind of classic UFO occupant beings, which, you know, retreated to the nearest patch of woods. And yet again, too, the concept that I'm really chasing lately is that it seems as though the phenomenon, um, especially when dealing with, you know, anything which seems, I guess you want to say personal, you can have sort of a personal interface with, um, even though I will admit that a lot of UFO encounters, it seems as though the faceless UFO is very interested in the witnesses as well. 
But whatever the anomaly is, it seems as interested in us as we are in it. Um, and this is a very classic example of that, where you have this bizarre, you know, lion humanoid being staring in at a sleeping couple. Well, if you enjoyed this episode on the Cataldo Catman, this rather short delve into the her a normal, perhaps? Oh, perhaps? <laughs> Please like, and if you're new to this field of crop circles, go ahead and subscribe to see what weirdness the future may have in store. Till then, you can keep up with whatever else I might possibly be doing on my free blog at patreon.com. For today, I am Zelia Edgar, signing off. Do we?